Welcome to De-Stress Your Business, the podcast where we show you how to get incredible results in your business without constant stress. I'm Alexis Kingsbury, a serial entrepreneur and founder at Air Manual. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by Jonathan Jay, a seasoned expert in the field of business acquisitions with over 20 years of experience in the industry. And as a result, Jonathan has a wealth of experience in evaluating, negotiating, and integrating businesses. He's successfully completed well over 50 acquisitions in his career. He's also started, built, and sold his own businesses, has mentored over a thousand other business owners on how to buy and sell businesses themselves, and has written more than 10 books on the topic. However, Jonathan once took the acquisition game to the extreme when making 48 acquisitions in just 30 months, learning that the stress can be overwhelming, taking him to breaking point and forcing an early exit. So I'll be talking uh, with Jonathan about his experiences, insights and advice on buying businesses and managing the stress that can come with it. Let's get started. So Jonathan, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you very much for having me, Alexis. No, it's fantastic to have you here. And let, let's start with a bit about your background. How did you get into sort of the acquisitions area and what is it that you find so attractive about that approach? Well, completely by accident, uh, really. 24 years ago, I had a, a publishing business uh, based in Portsmouth. Um, it, it published a, a couple of magazine titles uh, and it was, a, it was a small business and it made some money one month. It made a bit of a loss the next month. I mean, it was, it was very uh, up, up and down. And I was approached by a, a London-based company to buy it, um, which was quite a surprise to me that anyone would see value in, in this business that was the bane of my life and caused me lots of stress. Uh, and they bought it for more money than I'd ever made in the two and a half years that I'd owned it. Uh, so it was a real eye-opener, uh, really. Uh, fast forward a couple of years, I um, had a, a very fast growth uh, adult accredited adult education uh, business, mm -hmm. um, very uh, a business that grew very, very quickly. But I had a main competitor, which was somewhat irritating because the main competitor was comprised of people who used to work for me, mm -hmm. um, run by a client of mine who poached my staff and set up in competition. And they, they did that for five years. Um, oh, I then wow. bought them. They, they got themselves um, into a sort of distressed position uh, because of the, uh, the the health of the owner and and various other matters, so I I bought them, combined them with my uh, existing business, and then now I had this larger, even more profitable business. I was able to sell it to uh, a London-based private equity firm the following year. So that was two thousand and seven, which seems like yesterday, but was in fact sixteen years ago. Yeah, wow, and I love that. And and you know, you started off there with. But uh, selling one business, though uh, presumably weren't particularly looking uh, to do it at the time, and it and it kind of came to you, and then yes. uh, this other opportunity came up. But as you say, that was sixteen years ago, and your advancement in terms of what you've then done in this area is huge. Because, uh, for example, I know at one point um, that you'd uh, done uh, forty-eight acquisitions in thirty months which uh is an incredible feat right like it oh, but it's, it's, i know um <laughs> from speaking to you before um that that it almost left you at breaking point right so yeah it was, um, it was either a high point or a low point depending on yeah. which way uh, um, you um, look at um, it and we'll explore both sides of that. So um, let's start, start off by telling us about that experience um, and then where you ended up at, at the end of that 30 months and then, uh, and then we'll go into what you did, that, did next. Yeah, sure. So, so um, I, I, I take, I, I, so I, I, I did the deal with the uh, adult education company um, and then I did something similar uh, with uh, a digital marketing business um, I bought several digital marketing businesses. Uh, one was a traditional marketing business that was 30 years old. Um, I bought seven businesses uh, mm -hmm. in that sector from um, uh, uh, another private equity fund, uh, put them all together, sold sold them, uh, sold them again. I'd taken a couple of years off. My daughter uh, was born around that time. Um, so I was enjoying um, changing nappies, if that is uh, uh, enjoyable in any way uh, whatsoever. Um, <laughs> in its way. And, uh, uh, and then uh, taking her to, um, uh, to, to nursery uh, sparked a, a little bit of an idea. So in 2019, I bought five nursery schools. Um, and, and then uh, the pandemic, of course, uh, came along in March. 
2020. And uh, my business partner and I uh, discussed what was the best way forward. And of course, there were two options, really. Uh, one was do nothing, wait for it all to be over. Let's hope it's all over in three months, like many of us thought was going to happen. No way would it last years. No. Uh, uh, or, or push on ahead regardless. And we decided to push on ahead, which actually was was the right thing to do. Um, and we had very little resistance because we were really the only buyers in the market um, because everyone else was taking a step back. Uh, we had uh, sellers who were um, more sort of compliant to our uh, price and terms negotiation. So it, it all felt like the perfect opportunity, um, but it was almost too much of a good thing. Mm. And, uh, you know, we, we, we were buying them like, like crazy. Now we looked at 500. Wow. To, to, to buy 10% of, of, of that. So we were saying no to a lot, uh, but we had so many options. It was just, it was quite exciting at times. Um, but, you know, looking back, I should have sort of tempered that enthusiasm with a, do we really need to buy another one this week? I mean, one, one particular <laughs> week, we had three completions on week, one week. And I have clients mm -hmm. in my in my programs who, you know, who, who who do get extremely stressed about one deal and 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 understandably because mm -hmm. it can be yep. stressful uh, and i was doing that several times a week several yeah. times a month for for two and a half years um so it was almost like the opportunity was was so good that mm. it spoiled us because we 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 became a little bit greedy for the deals um, you know, they're, they're, they're not greedy for the money. I, I, I must emphasize, emphasize that because we were buying um, uh, businesses that had been massively affected by COVID. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. in, in many cases, there wasn't a lot of money on that, on that particular point. Of course, we obviously hoped it would be uh, more successful in the future. So it, it was, it, it started to get on top of me and it mm. crept up on me without me realizing it. And I, and I consider myself a very, a uh, resilient person. Mm. I've got a thick skin. Um, I um, things that stress other people don't stress me. Um, I have never worked for anyone else. So since the age of nineteen, after dropping out of university, I've had to fend for myself. I've never had the safety net of parents, friends, family uh, who are wealthy to sort of support me if things go wrong. So I've I've kind of lived and breathed entrepreneurialism, um, and yeah, it, it it got it got to the point where I started to feel unwell, mm. and yeah, we all feel unwell from time to time, don't we? And we we sort of we you know we have a bad day or maybe a bad few days, but it started to be every single morning waking up as tired as I went to bed, um, started to forget things. My memory actually started to become. Uh, embarrassingly uh, terrible and uh, I, I, I was taking uh, sleeping tablets and apparently you're not made to, meant to take sleeping tablets every night for two years that's not uh, how, how it's meant to work um, I had uh, maybe Alexis we're jumping ahead here a little bit no no um, this is good yeah we can do double back uh, if you'd like to and, and I oh. and um, I, I started developing um, stomach pains at first i thought it was appendicitis because i'd heard how appendicitis was just so agonizingly painful but a little bit of self-diagnosis on google and i found that it was in the wrong <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't where my appendix is and uh, uh eventually i had to give in and go to the doctors which was uh i felt like i was admitting defeat yeah and uh, the doctor said immediately we need to have a colonoscopy just to make sure that it's nothing sinister as they say and uh and and you know a colonoscopy is not the most um um enjoyable experiences although to be fair the thought process and think and, and leading up to it terrible but the actual process itself yeah is kind of you know with a, with a slight sedative <laughs> you don't sort of worry about it too much at the time uh and and there was nothing and the conclusion was it was it was just stress which is also embarrassing because if it had been something physical i could have blamed it yeah. i could have blamed it on the um uh, you know, on the on the uh, ulcer or whatever it it might have been, um, but no, it was all in my head, and uh, it it was it was affecting me physically, um, and I knew something had to change. So I went to a hypnotherapist uh, for sleeping actually, because I I 
I'd been to a hypnotherapist before mm. and I knew just how effective uh, that was. And I'm, I'm very sort of uh, susceptible to, uh, uh, to suggestion. So I, uh, so I was sitting, sitting there and had, had the session and I was, I felt just amazing uh, afterwards. So relaxed, but she said to me, yeah, maybe we should consider psychotherapy because, you know, hypnotherapy is really just a sort of a short-term mm -hmm. fix, mm -hmm. but we need to find out what the underlying stress points are. And I had several sessions um, and uh, it was great, actually. It was it was really good. I, again, I was kind of awkward about telling people about yeah. it, uh, but it, it, it was great. And uh, and I, I reached the conclusion that this business was killing me is a bit dramatic, but it was damaging my health. Yeah. And really, did I enjoy it anymore? No, the fun had gone out of it. I mean, yeah, we had hundreds and hundreds of staff. Um, I didn't have a, a senior management team that was strong enough. So loads of the problems were ending up on, on my table. Yeah, we had some quality issues. And yeah, I never wanted to have um, yeah, a, a business that 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 wasn't anything other than excellent and so that was just frustrating i didn't know enough about the sector to be able to fix it myself i didn't have people who could fix it for me um and the the quality problems created a real problem around raising finance to to grow and a you know a large business needs huge amounts of working capital so i was going through all these different things in my mind and it was just like i was spinning all these plates and i thought i've got to i've got to find an exit and the original plan was to do it before the end of the year so this was probably uh during a let's get this well a roughly um like a sort of seven eight months period mm -hmm. um and then i realized actually i could do it i could do it faster and get a similar result so so that was when i started the plan to say yeah i need i need a different lifestyle to this i'm sorry that was an incredibly long answer no. to I, I I love it. And I, I first want to um, uh, recognize you for, for a number of things. So firstly, thank you for your uh, candor and, and sharing it at that, that level of detail. I think also I want to recognize that um, getting to that point in, in any endeavor, you know, whether it's your own business or acquiring 48 or whatever it is, like being able to take uh, to accept that message and uh, make the hard decisions uh, and and potentially put some of those goals on hold um, uh, or scrap them completely when when you kind of realizing yeah this is this is not good for my health and relationships or whatever it is is a really important step and I and I think um, sharing both the fact that you got there but also the steps that you got there and in, including you know the psychotherapy and so on i think is is hugely important and useful for other uh entrepreneurs business owners acquirers etc out there that yeah. as you say like sometimes that can feel like failure or it can feel almost embarrassing as you say like the idea that oh it's you know it'd be better if it was physical and of course the reality is no it wouldn't like it's way no, better no. if it's in your head no, because I can justify it couldn't i I can exactly. say, oh, I've, got an, I've got an ulcer. Um, but when you say, oh, I'm just really stressed, people don't sort of take it so seriously. And and it was more than just, I'm really stressed. No, indeed. It was it was an absolutely overwhelming sense of responsibility because, you know, I, for example, on one particular day, there were two incidents at two of the locate at two separate locations, unrelated incidents, where th there was a, a broken bone in each case. And they were accidents. Um, and of course, yeah, lots of uh, concern from the parents. But in both cases, they actually did realize and acknowledge that it was a genuine accident. Mm -hmm. But I thought, how would I feel if that was that was my yeah. daughter? And and I thought, well, it's a broken bone today. I mean, is it mm. choking on lunch tomorrow? I mean, I just couldn't. I couldn't live. I could not live with myself. I could no. not live with myself. And I. I it, it's, it's just the, the the worst thing. I mean, when you have children, it's sort of, it you know, uh, looking after one child is enough response. Yeah, it really is. Looking yeah. after thousands of children um, was uh, was just was just too much. So uh, so so yeah, it was it was about getting my priorities right and and saying that you know I can't I can't sort of kill myself in the process. Um, that. By the way, that colonoscopy was the very first time I'd ever been into hospital. I'd never been to hospital. Wow. But 
for, for anything, A and E, nothing, mm -hmm. never been hospital. And I thought, I don't want this to be the starting point of uh, yeah, of a sort of a downward spiral of 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 health. Uh, and and to be fair, my my business partner, you know, you know she she's the the, the childcare ex expert. Um, so uh, I passed ownership to her. Uh, she had already been talking to a high net worth individual who's going to to back the business going forward. So that would would help her a, a lot. So I wasn't kind of just no. passing it to her and letting her get on with it. And there was always already a way forward uh, for her. Um, and uh, and and yeah. So so the decision the decision was uh, was made. And and I've got to say, probably the best decision mm. um, I, I've I've ever made. Yeah, incredible. And and I think, uh, as you say, like uh, the right decision and and a difficult one at that. I think it's it's interesting. I'll, I'll I'll dive shortly into some of that experience and particularly what you'd recommend for others. But one thing I also want to um, uh, highlight is that the mindset shift that you kind of went on from your first business to to having uh, to that being acquired and and then getting to a point where you were buying businesses and so on those are mindset shifts that a very small proportion of business owners go on yeah. like the realization that oh actually i can you know uh, achieve greater things achieve financial success etc through an exit is is one big one but then also realizing that actually you can acquire businesses and what that can mean um both in terms of your ability to grow a business, like r ridiculously fast compared to organic, your ability to just bolt on a whole sales and marketing for a function, basically, or you know, uh, bring a whole load of customers or whatever it is, um, is phenomenal. And so those are big mindset shifts. The mindset shift that I'm really interested in just uh, briefly exploring with you is where you get to the point where the volume of, as we say, like 48 in... 30 months where you're doing three in a week, et cetera, where that mindset shift where you're, you're, I mean, you're almost treating the acquisitions like other business owners might treat sales or hiring of individual employees over, over equivalent period. And yet you're doing it at this whole other level. Um, speak to us a bit about like, uh, how do you expand your thinking in that way to kind of get to that point where that doesn't, phase you because as I say for a lot of business owners even the idea of buying or selling one business is uh is scary in in the extreme yeah sure so so the first acquisition is always the hardest um not not so much hard hardest because it's more technical mm. but hardest because you've got the mindset shift so I had a a group of uh, business owners and and sort of entrepreneurially minded people uh, at an event this last weekend we can just go and uh the the you know talking talking to people in the breaks and and, and afterwards uh, is definitely as much about the mindset as it is about the technicalities the mechanics of 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 doing a of, of doing a deal and what i've always seen is that not only is the first deal the hardest actually the 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 buyer always makes it more difficult for themselves by buying a small business because small businesses mm. are also harder to buy. So yeah. not only is it more difficult in terms of mindset, you're actually buying a more diff a difficult entity. So they go and buy a business that does a few hundred thousand uh, a year because maybe their own business is something similar. So it's kind of within their comfort zone or they want to buy something smaller than themselves. A risk and now. Yeah, but the, the thing is, it's actually easier to buy a larger business. Uh, it's um, you're, you're buying typically a better business, a, a business that's proven itself over a longer period of time, has been more successful in terms of attracting customers and revenue generation. Um, and, and also larger businesses are easier to finance. Uh, they have um, better management. Uh, they have a better financials. The owner is less emotionally involved. Than a, than a sort of a, a smaller business. Um, so yeah, to give you an example of someone who's done, uh, who, who I taught, by the way, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, done the complete opposite of me and done it better than me, uh, is Danny. So uh, Danny um, uh, has, uh, and he told this story to my my group this weekend, bought, uh, has bought four businesses since mm -hmm. the start of the pandemic, all in manufacturing. Now he doesn't know anything about manufacturing, so he was telling the audience about each of these four businesses. And one of them, he said, is like a plastic thing. And we press, and you could tell he didn't really know exactly what it did. 
And he said, when they take me around the factory, I look at all the equipment and I nod and everything and they explain to me everything. Uh, and I'm thinking, I haven't got I haven't got a clue here. So he doesn't really understand the business, but that's OK, because yeah. he's bought larger businesses with a management team that clearly do understand mm. it. And that's good because he's not going to be managing it. Um, he lives several hours away uh, from where they are. Uh, the four businesses combined of six million of annual revenue. Um, now, most businesses don't ever get to six million of annual revenue. Mm. He's gone out and bought four entities, six million of annual revenue. Uh, he doesn't get involved in the day to day at all. Um, he gets his management reports once a month and he um, uh, he plays golf twice a week. That's a very important uh, thing for him. And uh, he bought those four businesses, six million of revenue without using a penny of his own money. So there is absolutely zero risk to him. So that is textbook. Um, so I didn't necessarily practice what I what I what I preach um, and ended up with just a, a, a crazy workload. Yeah, I think it's interesting. And, and I and I know from when we've spoken previously that uh, you've openly said, like, you didn't practice what you what would preach and what you would train on others and what you'd write in your books. Partly, I think, is, as you said, the speed of which uh, that you were doing it um, probably didn't even give you pause to reflect and say, hang on, like, am I am I following the process here? Um, and so as a result, my own process. Yeah, in, exactly. indeed, your own process yeah. uh, that I, I know from um, from your other content and so on, your fantastic uh, video channel on YouTube, etc. You know, you talk about how when you follow the process, it can be as as you've described in the past, like child's play. It can be, it really can be that simple. But I think, as you say, say it's um, a lot of it is mindset and and so on. And you've got to follow the process <laughs> because, in your case, you know, some of the uh, corporate entity stuff and uh, and the uh, due diligence and the how you apply. Uh, what you've learned from other businesses to to apply others and integration, yeah. all those sorts of things. I know that those um, steps kind of got uh, got skipped <laughs> in lieu of working. So it was almost like the opportunity was so good mm. that we were. Uh, um, let, let me. Is there an analogy for this? It's it's like it's like uh, in in one of these game shows, TV game shows where you know, a million pounds is dropped from a helicopter so in 20 pound notes and people are running around picking up the 20 pound notes. That was us running around yeah. picking up these, these businesses, not wanting to let a good one go. Um, uh, but as we were picking up the businesses and holding them in our arms, like the 20 pound notes, they were slipping out from, our, yeah. for, from, from underneath us. Uh, but we didn't notice because we're so mm. busy picking we're still up. still grabbing more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In fact, actually that's a reasonably decent analogy of what actually well, was going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I I like it. And yeah, not not taking that moment to go, actually, is there a bucket or a suitcase that we should Absolutely. Or maybe enough is enough and we should just stop now. Be thankful Indeed. for what we've got. Yeah. Indeed. And uh and and based on what you've been through, both uh both pre and during and post all that experience, um would you still recommend others get into business acquisition? And uh, and 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 particularly, um, how should they start and minimize the stress involved? Oh yeah, oh abs absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, don't listen. Don't listen to me and my and my experiences. Uh, yeah, I mean, who's going to go out and buy forty eight businesses in in two and a half years? I mean, that's just like you know a, a, an anomaly. That's not the yeah. norm. So the majority of my clients buy one business. Um, uh, so that's just over fifty percent. The other uh, forty-five percent buy multiple businesses. Mm -hmm. So I've got Chris in Manchester, uh, who's bought fifteen online businesses. So these are businesses that sell primarily through their uh, well, one hundred percent through their through their web through websites. Um, I've got uh, uh, Gavin, who's also in Manchester, has bought nine printing business mm -hmm. specialist printing businesses. Yeah, I've got James who's buying funeral care businesses. I've got Alison buying hardware shops. Um, uh, you know, all, you know I've, I've got John buying telecoms businesses. I've got, uh, you know, I've got Andrew buying training companies. So, so it's all these different sectors, and you know, I, I, I'm I'm not perfect, but people tell me that they they learn more from mistakes than they do from yeah. uh, from successes. So I've got the I've got the multi million pound exits. I've got the I've got the successes. I've mm. got the uh, the the deals where you know I I buy the business for for practically nothing. Uh, and 11 months later sell it for more than than a million pounds uh, so 
I, I've got an incredible range of, of of positive experiences, but tempered along the way are the are the ah oh, I should have done that differently yeah. or I'll remember that for next time. And yeah, I'm not a I'm not a guru. I, I'm not a um, I really don't like that word. I'm not a guru. Uh, I'm not perfect, but I, I've got real life experience. Mm. And I always think if you're going to learn from someone, learn from someone who's willing to talk about the things Very that nice. go quite right. Or that went wrong. Or I really screwed up on that one because then you get a more honest view of the whole thing rather than it's unicorns and rainbows and it's all wonderful. And you can do this with your eyes closed and you can't, you know, buying a business takes effort. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot of time. Actually, it takes a lot less time than people think. I always say, you know, if you if you've got two hours a week, you can you can bu you can buy a business because so much of the heavy lifting is done by your accountant and your lawyer. Um, you know, you don't do the due diligence, do you? They that's what they do. You don't do the legal paperwork. That's what your lawyer does. So, um, so so again, lo long answer to to your short question. No, I th but I I think that's good, and I think that. Um... As you say, it's it, it, you've got to learn those lessons um, uh, ideally from other people's mistakes rather than, than your own, but uh, uh, but the other will do um, to, uh, to to kind of re reduce those uh, reduce that pain going forward and, and reduce the stress and so on. I think specifically if we speak to what is it that causes stress when um, buying uh, when buying businesses, when making those acquisitions, etc. You know, I, I I know that you teach people a process for buying businesses. Um, yet for most people, I think acquisition probably seems uh, more like a set of skills, experience, even an art form uh, to to doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, talks through like, can you know, firstly, can someone really follow a process to successfully acquire a business? And then, particularly as part of that process. What are the um because you know people can go on your channel to get exactly what that process looked like, but um uh, what are the parts of it that reduce the the risk of stress particularly? <laughs> yeah, I, absolutely. Well, I can give you a, a very a very short answer to this. You'll be pleased to know, um, which is uh, don't risk your own money. Mm -hmm. If you don't risk your own money, then that takes a huge amount of stress off the table. Uh, number two make sure that you're not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the business. Uh, and that means you need to buy a business of sufficient size that it can afford a manager. Um, yeah. And if the current owner is the manager, then you replace the owner with someone else, usually someone from within the business. Uh, you sort of elevate them up, you promote them up into that managerial uh, position. So if you don't use your own money and you don't operate it day to day, that gets rid of the majority of the, of, of the stress. Buy the right business, when you buy the wrong business, that creates stress. What's the wrong business? A business that's what we call distressed. Um, so it's uh, it, it's either losing money, it's on a knife edge. Um, yeah, it, it may topple over at any moment, but you feel like you can rescue it and be the 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 knight in shining armor to rescue it and be a hero and then sell it for a fortune. Where people do do that, I've done it in one very significant uh occasion but it requires a certain personality type uh, you've got to be comfortable with creditors knocking on the door staff quitting suppliers not supplying customers walking out um and it's hugely stressful you might not pay any money for it you might just pay a pound or a dollar for it but you're going to pay in terms of time stress energy and, and maybe putting money in in the future so buying the right business is buying a business that's solid profitable, more than five years old, um, of a certain size. I always stretch stretch my clients to say the first business, go for a million plus. Okay. Because as soon as you go for a smaller business, I mean, if you think about profit margins, business that, that turns over 300,000, making 20%, that's 60,000 pounds. Mm. That's a salary. Yeah, you're not buying a job here. You're, you're buying a business that can that can uh, create sufficient income to change your lifestyle a million pound turnover 200,000 profit on a 20 percent margin 200,000 starts to move the needle doesn't it yeah. that starts to pick up the mortgage that starts to buy the holiday home you know that that you can actually do something with 200,000 60 ah uh, not quite so exciting mm. if you're going to put the effort into buying the business why not buy the 200,000 pound one what could stop you doing that mindset well, having the knowledge, obviously, but mind mindset is critical. 
Yes, indeed. And 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 on that, because um, uh, I think I love the point around, you know, making sure that uh, you're not uh, putting um, personal finances at stake and making sure that you're not going to be operationally required to reduce that stress. Just speak to us about that first one around uh, the personal finances, because I, I know um, from other interviews that you've done, sometimes people talk about the oh you know buying a business for a pound and and you mentioned it uh, today and you you yourself have said that actually most of the deals aren't that like people talk about that because it's a useful shorthand um but actually it's rarely that you're buying the business for a pound and it's that simple yeah. it's um there's normally either something else that you're buying whether it's an asset or or that there's future cash flows that you're having to provide like there's there are normally mechanisms as part of it yeah. Um, for those that just can't see, like, how could I possibly buy a business that's doing a million pounds in revenue, which, um, you know, for, for people listening, maybe a business uh, similar to a business that they've either got or that they aspire to. And yet we're talking about buying one straight off the off the shelf uh, for yeah. for with a million pounds and yet not putting in personal that's income. It. How is that? Uh, give us a scenario or an example where that's even possible just to illustrate that. Yeah, so let me explain explain the difference. When people talk about buying a business for a pound, buying a business for, for a dollar, uh, if that is the only payment, that's the only consideration, so there's nothing else, there's just one pound and the business is yours, uh, you're buying a company that has problems and a company that has liabilities. So you're effectively taking over the liabilities. So you're buying yourself uh, a big bag of problems. Um, so it may look very, very appealing, um, but you are buying uh, problems. It is not for the beginner. It is not a beginner's strategy. If you've never bought a business before, buying someone else's problems uh, may feel tempting because you think, oh, I can fix it all. Yeah. Again, I can be the hero and sort it all out. Um, it would take your eye off the ball with your other business and it would be massively distracting. Now, that's different to what I talk about. What I talk about is how do we buy the solid profitable business mm -hmm. um, and pay a fair amount for it an amount that you've agreed with the owner, but that amount that you've agreed with the owner doesn't come out of your personal pocket. Okay, so where does the money come from? Well, we can finance it. We can finance it by financing the uh, the debtor book. So the B2B clients who haven't yet paid their invoices. So every month the company sends out invoices, everyone's got 30, 60, 90 days to pay. Um, and there's maybe a million pounds of invoices outstanding. So don't forget, we're going for larger businesses, mm -hmm. million pounds of invoices outstanding. Um, and we can immediately uh, get 800,000 pounds of that advanced to us. And then that advance is paid off as those invoices are paid. So that's uh, invoice financing. Um, we can use asset financing. So if the business has equipment, machinery, uh, buildings, yeah, real estate. If the if the if the business has all these physical things, we can get finance against those, and we can use that as part of the purchase price. If the business has cash in the bank, we can use that as part of the purchase price. If there are outstanding director's loans, in other words, the director has taken money out of the business upon sale of the business, they need to return that money because there's a black hole in the business that they need to plug plug with the money that they, they've taken 100,000 out, need to put 100,000 back in. Well, we can make that 100,000 part of the payment for the business. They don't have to give it back. And usually they can't because they've spent it, yeah. which is why they took it in the first place. Yeah. So all these different ways of, of doing mm -hmm. it. Um, we can uh, get the owner of the business to take out a specific type of loan uh, that falls into the bank account on the day of completion. And we can use that loan to buy the business. So we don't even take out the loan ourselves. It's taken out by the uh, the previous owner, or rather, I should say, the business takes out the loan rather than the yeah. individual. So, so there's all these different ways of doing it. So this is the knowledge, the knowledge piece. The more you know, the better deals you'll do. Yes, love that. And I think um, uh, what you illustrate there shows that you've got, uh, A, lots of options, B, it requires um, understanding those and when to apply them, those different strategies and, and, and what's going to be appropriate and understand the, what's going on in the business. But also it illustrates how um, for the business owner, it, those those aren't options to the same degree, right? Like they can't get themselves a big payday by just doing some invoice factoring and saying, right, great, I've got 800,000 pounds. It's like, yep, that's got to be paid back. So you've got to you know, continue to run the business as you were, and you, that's got to, like, it's... It, it, talking about it, Alexis, their own business. Sorry? 
Are you talking about doing? Yeah. This so, so for someone who's in their own business, like those, those uh, that suite of options, I can see how those don't apply to them. They don't add the the benefit. Whereas for someone acquiring it, you've suddenly got this catalog of options that you can use to to successfully exit that business owner. They get their payday and are, and are able to get out. For the person who's acquired it, you've then got a business that has now got an increased uh, uh, set of liabilities because it's either uh, taking on debt against an asset or uh, invoice factoring, all these sorts of things. Um, for uh, to reduce the stress and and the risk, let's say that you know things go belly up and or, or just don't go as well as hoped. Maybe the exit of the business owner. It turns out that actually a lot of the big customers were based on relationships with them and so on and and you kind of do your best but but it gets away from you obviously there's an element of stress as as you try and avoid all of that happening but um uh, like what what would then happen to make sure that it doesn't you know end up with them personally losing losing their house losing their shirt etc as the acquirer that's gone into that because it's not your money no that, that's but, the thing. It's not, so, it's so not, is, not, is it the case not, that worst case scenario, the business closes and as an absolute worst case scenario? Mm. Yeah, as I mean, the, the chances of that happening uh, are slim because we we want to buy good businesses and we want to buy good businesses with good management. We don't want to buy businesses that are that are rocky. Now we never know what's around the corner. I mean, no one predicted a worldwide pandemic that would keep us in our homes, for example, and yeah. and shut. Uh, you know, restaurants, shops. You know, we we that was unpredictable, um, and hopefully it will never happen again like that. Um, but we don't want to buy businesses that uh, that, that that are rocky. We want to buy these solid businesses, which is why larger businesses are more stable than businesses that rely upon one person's individual genius to make the business run. You take the genius out, and there's nothing left behind. Um, they're, they're, they're the ones that are tough to buy. Um, but interestingly, they're the ones that new business buyers, and I hasten to add the ones that don't have my guidance, uh, they go off and buy those ones because they feel it's easy to buy a, a 100,000 turnover business. Well, yeah, you're making life more difficult for yourself. Yeah, and 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 uh, just to pick up on that particular example of the the size being such a difference, it reminds me a bit of um, when employing members of staff. Like in the past, uh, when I was worried about the risk of taking on employees, I'd resort to things like taking on someone part time because I thought, oh well, that could be less risky and and so on. And yet, it turns out more painful because, of course, the amount of effort to buy the small business. Uh, versus the large business is is similar in the same way as the amount of effort to hire the part-time person versus full-time is similar and yet you haven't got the wiggle room and if things go well you haven't got the opportunity and all these sorts of things so I think yes. I love that advice of actually um, and it is again it comes back to mindset of of thinking a bit bigger which means that uh, you reduce some of that risk you increase the potential and actually it allows you to reduce the stress involved as well by having a management team. Um, one thing um, you know, we talked about uh, when you interviewed me for uh, for uh, your podcast on business buying strategies, we talked about integration of businesses and how um, uh, getting uh, the businesses that you acquire and getting them to play nicely uh, and uh, and get the benefits and the uh, um, efficiencies uh, across them and uh, economies of scale and, and so on is is, is important. Um, how like you've talked about the uh, reducing the stress by having the good management team like how difficult is it to get a good management team that can can actually do that for you because for many business owners listening they may you know, may even struggle with existing staff members that they've got the idea that one of their staff members could suddenly be the manager of this bigger business or that they could take any of the, you know those people and suddenly uh, run a business that's bigger than the one they've got um may be uh, surprising to them so how how do you kind of go about that? Yeah, two different things here then. Mm. Uh, there's a difference between a management team running a business and a management team running a group of businesses. Mm -hmm. So the management team running the business is already there yeah. because that's part of what you're buying because you're buying a stress-free life. So you're buying a business that already has management in place. So that, that isn't a concern. Um, and yeah, you know, 
if if you as an individual with your own business has struggled developing a management team, um, you know, that, that could be maybe you're just not very good at interviewing people or not very good at recruiting, not very good at managing the management team. Um, so buy a business that already has that in place. Then management team for your growing group, because, you know, as I said, 45% of my clients buy multiple businesses. And therefore, um, you, you've got two, three, four, five, six. I've got, uh, uh, you know, uh, da Darren has bought uh, 21 hairdressing salons. Um, you know, I've got, I've got uh, um, uh, all, all, all different people doing all, all different all different things. So then you need a senior management team. And the senior management team, uh, the most important person in the senior management team is your CFO, is your chief financial yeah. officer. Because, you know, I, I, like, for example, Phil's uh, bought a trucking and transport business. Um, this time last year, Phil was a self-employed truck driver earning 60000 a year. Wow. Okay. Um, fast forward six months, uh, he um, owns a 7 million revenue business making... Wow. 700,000 pounds profit a year that he bought for 1.7 million pounds, but not a penny of his own money. Mm -hmm. He's now got I don't know, 32 trucks and he's got, you know, he's got, he's got a big, got a big operation. Uh, he's got another deal lined up that's about to complete. They were taking over the 10 million mark. He wants to be at 25 million by the end of 2023. So completely different scale. Yeah. yeah. 6,000, 25 million. So you need a team to run that because usually unless you have a corporate background, you don't have the experience of working with those big numbers with that, you know, with hundreds of staff. So you need to hire people who do, and they typically are expensive. You, know, you need to be prepared to pay good salaries. But look, if you've got, if you've got a business that's doing 25 million, making 5 million EBITDA earnings before tax, and, um, and you're in your, in your, paying 100,000 for that senior member, 120 for that one, 80 for that one, you can afford it. Yeah. Those seems like crazy numbers when you've got one small business, but if you've got a group, you can afford it. And you know why you have to afford it? So that you can have your holidays and not be thinking about it all the time. Love that. Absolutely love that. Thank you, Jonathan. And um, we've talked a bit about some of the uh, kind of tips for uh, someone who's considering buying a business for the first time in terms of some of their mindset shifts. Um, but what advice would you have for them, particularly in terms of how could they learn more about acquiring businesses, including uh, from yourself? Uh, well, um, uh, I, I think a great starting point is my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So if you if you go on my YouTube channel, I think it's about 180 videos there. Um, you'll see behind the scenes of, of some of my acquisitions. Uh, there are some educational videos there. Uh, you'll see me interviewing um, people uh, such as yourself um, and uh, and other business experts, and also people uh, who've who've been on my programs, bought businesses, uh, telling their story. So that's a great place to start and there's a free video online course there as well so anyone wants to check it out that's the that's the place to go to fantastic i love it and uh yeah i uh, i myself would recommend it as well i've uh i've checked uh, uh consumed quite a lot of videos from from your youtube channel uh and uh and been fortunate to to listen to you speak at events as well and i think there's there's so much uh great advice that you have i think that the the openness to which you you come to it is I think is, is fantastic uh, and as you might expect from from me and from uh, someone who's ceo of uh, 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 or, or a co-founder of air manual uh we're big on processes and making things um reliably produce uh results so i i love the uh, the approach that you take to making sure that 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 you uh, get great results for your customers um the clients that you work with uh, by taking that process. So I do highly recommend that you check out Jonathan's podcast and YouTube channel, uh, Business Buying Strategies. We'll, we'll make sure there's a link in the, uh, in the show notes. Uh, but otherwise, Jonathan, thank you so much. It's been fantastic. No, thank you for your time. Really good talking to you. Now, as regular listeners will know, we run a weekly webinar on how to free up 15 hours per week and remove the constant stress of running a business without slowing down growth. It's every Wednesday at 1 p.m. UK time, typically, but you can find out more and register for the next one at www.airmanual.co forward slash webinar. Now, a final note for our podcast listeners, as a new podcast, we need your help. If you found today's content valuable, please share it on social media, like, subscribe, take just a minute to leave an honest review. 
any of those will hugely help us by giving the podcast more visibility and allow us to help more people. Otherwise, until next time, have fun.